welcome to Blind Date. Here's your host, Sir Blind. Thank you, thank you. Hello and welcome to Blind Date. On tonight's show, we have three very handsome men ready to become someone this night in shining armor. So, let's say hi to the guys. Let's start with number one. Hello, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? Hello, I'm Sir Ethan Moore of Hard Tour. So if I married you, I'd be still Artois, <laughs> like the bear, everyone. But anyway, uh, and number two, what's your name and where do you come from? I'm an AS, and I'm from Troy. And finally, number three, what's your name and where do you come from? Well, three handsome knights. Let's meet our leading lady, though, holding out for a hero. Hello. Please have a seat. Hi, I'm Mary from London. I'm looking for an old-fashioned romance and a real charmer to sweep me off my feet. Well, that's good, because we have three guys which we know you will enjoy, and I hope you got some questions for them. Yes, sir, I do. My first question is, where would you take me on our first date to really make a good impression? And uh, that's for number one. Well, I really do think that absence makes your heart grow fonder, and it takes me a really long time to get ready for a date. So I'll probably leave for about, oh, seven years. Then I'll come back for a bit of rumpy pumpy. Then I'll leave again for another seven years. And then I'll come back and pick you up in my car. Um, how about 8.30? So, um, number three. So, you don't say much. Maybe you're a bit shy? I guess you'd like to take me somewhere where we could be together but not talk much. Maybe the cinema? I'm sure once you get to know me, you'll realise I'm not scary and you'll be a bit more chatty. If not, I usually find that after a stiff drink, even the quietest guys can become dead fun. Oh, well, good answers from all the men. Um, so, Mary, what's your second question? Um, my second question, Silla, is that my parents are really protective of me. I've always been their little princess. So my question is, how would you persuade them that you're the right guy for me? And that's number two. Well, I really know the importance of family. And I literally went to hell and back for my dad. So I know how hard it is when they disapprove. I've had plenty of experience of being that guy that the mother-in-law hates. She even accused me of being gay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd persuade them with my military prowess. Maybe even kill your ex-boyfriends so they know just how much I love you. Seriously though, it really matters to me that your family likes me. Because maybe one day we'll be sharing a kingdom. Your family does have a kingdom, right? Um, right. Moving on. I also know about disapproving parents, and I'll carry out any task they set me to prove myself worthy of your hand. Even if at first they seemed impossible, I wouldn't even let a giant challenge stand in the way of our being together. I didn't slay a dragon for you. So as I said before, all of this might take a while, so you may have to be good at waiting. Also, how do you feel about boats? Like, sea journey in general? Um, well, I've been on the ferry to France before. <laughs> hmm, good enough. Okay, well, that seems nice. Uh, so, Mary, they all seem pretty dashing so far. Um, I don't know how you'll manage to choose between the three of them, but to help you out, what is your third question? My third question, sir, is 
how would you impress me to show me that you're the only one for me? And that's for number two. Well, my mother is Venus, so I think I charm you with my knowledge of love. But failing that, I'm handsome, rich, and good with my soul. I mean, what's not to like? Right, and number three. Well, what do you make of all that, Mary? I think that the fact you're willing to listen really sets you apart from the other guys. And I think you're happy with who you are. You don't need to prove yourself to me. I also think that you're the really faithful type and won't suddenly turn out to be someone completely different. So Mary, that's all of your questions, but before you make a decision, here's Graham with your options. Number one, Sir Eglamour, the dashing knight errant of Artois. Number two, Aeneas, the sensitive king who's in touch with his feminine side and knows his way around the sword. Number three, it's not so much blind date, it's blind, deaf, dumb and possibly dead. We're not quite sure who he is, but we think he's a squire. Thanks, Graham. So, Mary, it's decision time. Who are you going to pick? I think I'm going to pick, it's a tough decision, but I'm going to pick number three. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. That's our show. And thank you to our lovely maiden and also our dashing knights over here. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, that's our show. Thank you for watching.